Thanks for that. Um, my Twitter account's on the bottom right. If you guys are into that sort of thing or want to throw any questions my way, um, thanks later on. Feel free to go ahead. Um, our sort of introduced Elixir is a digital creative agency um, specialising in um, responsive um, website design, um, building mobile apps, and also doing branding for companies. Um, we're quite a young company, um, just reached our two and a half years. Um, but I'm going to sort of go through and do sort of an introduction to us, uh, talk about some of the work we've been up to, um, while also um, cover some sort of points and tips as to what we've learned in the process of starting a business from uni and, and sort of see how it goes. So yeah, so I'm going to look at some recurring themes, so things that kept cropping up, um, some what I call like business shrapnel, um, so stuff that's kind of hurt in the process of starting up a company and being a business, um, and as a result of that, some key lessons that we've learned, so hopefully it will be helpful. Um, um, so Elixir is um, four core members, um, so myself, managing director, Christian, who's sat in the audience, um, research director, who's heads up our app, phone, app department, um, Paul is our creative director, so does all the design for our apps, our branding, and our websites, and Becky, who heads up our um, sort of website, design, website builds, um, but also is our FD, so manages all our finances and tells us when we can't buy things. Um, which is quite useful to have around in the business. Um, we started here, um, we all met here six years ago um, at the university. Um, we studied on a digital art technology course um, uh, that was run by IDAP. Um, as part of that course, we had the opportunity to work on research projects, working with companies such as the NHS and IBM, so working on some really interesting projects, um, including doing works. In the first year, we built a, a game for World, World Futures. Um, lots of Facebook games, so really looking the flash year back then. Um, that was sort of our, our passion, we love building games, that's, and that's what we found came quite easy to us, so we did some e-learning games, and some more abstract um, kind of game ideas. Um, and that's kind of what our passion of building games is kind of what brought us together. Um, in our third year of studying on the course, we had the opportunity to go on placement. If anyone has the opportunity to do a placement here, um, just do it. Um, not only does it allow you to sort of pull yourself up and get yourself into different industries and different companies, it also can help harness your skills a lot better. Um, so Christian went off to Sony, um, working there, sort of working on digital signage. I worked at SourceStream, which is a local web streaming company, building um, back-end web streaming systems and, and building social platforms and stuff. And Paul worked at, I think Paul worked about six placements in one year, which is a bit mental. Um, but he also worked at Call of Same Vision, which is a Plymouth magazine, and also Remo, which was a local game development company. Um, and Becky worked at Pixillion, which is a digital agency um, um, up in Bristol. So a really like mixed variety of businesses of all different shapes and sizes, which really gave us a good scope of sort of how the industry how industry works. Um, and then in our final year, we had the opportunity to do um, a veg culture module. So the thing to take into account is we're not business people. We never really have a big grasp of it. We've all worked in jobs, but we didn't have an idea of how it works. We all thought of creatives, artists, designers, um, and this gave us the opportunity to look into business and see how that works and whether or not it'll work for us. We all sort of spent the four years while being at uni kind of learning about each other and picking who we wanted to work with, and we had a good, strong team that was quite passionate about what we did, so it made sense to try and build a business out of it. Um, the hardest thing we came up with was coming up with a company name. I think we worked it out about a week before our presentations. Um, and since we're gamers, obviously the Elixir was a potion of life. Um, and since we do digital stuff, we had pixels, so we just whacked it together and came up with Elixir, which uh, with a slogan of bringing pixels to life, and it kind of fit quite nicely with what we wanted to do. Um, but yeah, again, sort of a name takes a while, but when it fits, it fits. It's good to take time, make sure you get it right. Um, and business plans, this was an interesting one. Um, we're all um, sort of friends on the course and we all like believe in a good bit of banter as well. So when we did the business plans, I think it was the day before the deadline, we all, each of us um, posted photos of us with our business plans and a ream of paper about this thick and said everyone, this is our section of our business plan for our business. And I think quite a lot of people will mess themselves a little bit when they saw that thinking, oh, have I done enough? Um, but really it was a lot more than that. And I think the key thing when developing a business plan is keep it short and concise. Someone's got to read that. They don't want to read like, masses and masses of stuff. Um, but obviously put the key things in, in there that you need. And obviously we've had haircuts since then as well. 
Um, and then we had the opportunity to present to um, the Dragons. So the Venture Culture module basically was you created a business plan and you created a, uh, did, you did a presentation. And whoever won um, the collective got the most points from doing that. Won a free space and formation zone, which is based on the I Imagine most of you all know what that is. Um, and as a result of that, we won. Um, Becky is going to kill me for putting this photo up there, but I figured I'll, I'll do it anyway. Um, and yeah, so we got the opportunity to get three months space um, in the formation. We spent three months in there, which is a really good kickstart to the business. Um, because before that, we were literally working in our bedrooms, like getting out of bed, jumping on the computer, and getting off the computer, and going back to bed. And it kind of that situation isn't very healthy, and it kind of gets you to completely the wrong mentality of how to work. And being students, that's how we worked. We're being students. It's kind of almost a very hobbyist attitude to have. And kind of jumping in to get the opportunity to go into a business space allowed us to change our mentality of how business should work. And it gives you a cost as well. You have to pay the rent at the end of each month. It gives you that drive to help and keep going. Um, and also running a business of four of us, we have to, we all have to work together. Being separate in different buildings like Plymouth kind of isn't very useful or helpful for us to work together as a business doing projects. So it allowed us to unite as a team and actually go through the process together. Um, and then the um, first project we managed to pick up was with Wild Futures. So the company that we worked with in our first year of uni came back to us, realised we started a company and said, look, we've got this project working with Stephen Fry. Um, we built a video um, working with him, got a video campaign. We really want to find a way of getting this towards a younger audience um, or just to a, a larger audience. So we built Monkey Nuts, which was an interesting uh, project. Um, um, and yeah, it's, so basically it's based off, um, in the monkey sanctuary, based on the they have enrichment um, tools on the side of the cages where they have to get the nut from the top to the bottom, as fast as well, uh, in order to get the nut out and order to have a treat. So we basically turned people into monkeys and got them to be the monkey for that moment. And they also got to compete against the monkeys as well, so they learned the characters and who's at the sanctuary, and, um, and it sort of made it feel a bit more real in the, the montage base of that. Um, and back to the point was, this is, we were sort of still starting up, we were still quite fresh, we didn't really 100% know what we were doing on the business side of things, we weren't really charging enough money for what we were doing, it kind of worked, and we kind of decided, we kept getting told you need to work on your business, not just in the business, not just developing and building stuff, you need to actually think, how is this business going to work, how is it going to grow, how is it going to develop. Um, so we went on the outset programme. Other programs are available if you're looking for it, um, which allowed us to start learning about. I went on it learning from a business point of view. Uh, Becky went along and went to outset finance, learning more about the financial side, and then we went and each got two and a half uh, grand each loan uh, to help kickstart the company. So, total 10 grand to help start the company, so buy new equipment, invest in new ideas, and that sort of thing. So, um, really helped us. Um, and then we moved on and built the first app for. Our first app for Plymouth Student Union, their first app, which looking back, it, it seemed design nice back in the day. Uh, I think we sort of grew out of the design quite quickly, um, but I don't know if anyone of you saw it when it was out. But it utilised something that was quite big at the time, which was gamification, so rewarding people for doing interactions. So if they shared a post on Facebook, they'd get points. If they checked into the event, you'd get points. If you um, so you interact out, you get points, and then the student union could then give them offers and deals and stuff based on, based on the thing. It's, it's a, the four square mentality of rewarding people for doing interactions, um, which was an interesting project for us. And actually, be able to work with EPA, the EPA directly for a client of us, literally being in our first year, was actually quite good for us, for us to pull that sort of project off. And that was purely on a recommendation that we've been to the uni, and also recommend from IDAP, who were the people who we've been working with on the course. Um, and then obviously companies always need more money and you've got to find ways of looking for that money. So we entered the start of a 10 programme. So the idea is at the end of it you get 10 companies, they give you 10 grand each and a total minute to 10 minutes pitching. So you start off, there's, I think they, you send in a pitch to them and they break it down to 45 companies, so 15 in Bournemouth, uh, 15 in Exeter, 15 um, up in Bristol. And then you had to go in with like had to do go in and do a ten minute pitch of the business idea, and then the winners of that um, they whittled that down to five companies each, and then you went up to Bristol, so it's fifteen companies, and then five people got knocked out of that, and then those ten people got the money, um, and we got through. Um, we got through with our idea, which was which is 
um, student union platform. So based on the idea that we had um, with Plymouth Student Union, we thought, well, everyone's going to have the money to do this, um, to build an app for them, for their student union. Um, it seemed like a great idea that Plymouth loved it. We had lots of people coming back to us and, and, wanting, and wanting apps. Um, so we decided to get funding and actually push the idea out. And we even went, we entered to the NEC and, and presented at a show. We got loads of really good feedback. We were in a competition with um, an iPad Mini and said, you know, enter your details, enter some feedback, and, and do, 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 do market research. Um, but we kind of learned a lesson pretty quickly that until you do your market research, you don't really know anything. Um, and it's really important to do good market research um, before you try and launch a product or you try to spend the money in getting out there. Um, our biggest challenge was we didn't think that Plymouth University was one of the six biggest universities in the country and actually the student union is actually quite big and they've got a lot of money to invest in apps. So really if we're only dealing with the top ten universities, maybe it's not really a viable business idea to be building apps for everyone. Um, so that was a really good lesson. Um, um, it was a really good lesson for us to learn as a company to try and actually try and push the product to market ourselves because we've always been a, a business market where we try and do stuff for other people. We wanted to try and launch our own products. If I'm going too fast, I have a tendency to go off on one a little bit, so just let me know. Um, and that kind of leads me on to contra deals, um, collaboration, and partnerships um, because. I think a lot of people who go off on business, they, they start up businesses on their own. They don't necessarily have a team of people behind them to, to, to sort of to start up. Um, and this is a really important way of actually making yourself feel less, less alone, I think. And also, it gives you a support network and actually makes your business feel a lot bigger than it necessarily is. Um, we're now up at uh, Mama Road in our own office space. Um, the company that owns is building a Silverstream TV, which is the company that I went on placement with. We did a deal with them where we got three months office space and we built the website. So in the first six months of doing business, we paid about two months rent. So it, was, it worked out quite nice really. So for three months in the formation zone and, and three months here, well, first three months here, and then we're still in there now. Um, and then obviously other partners and people that we work with, um, IDAP, which is the guys who run our course, who also recommended us for the UPSU project, um, approached us and said, look, we've got this, this new software, we've got this new package that we're offering. Can't really move an event. Like with, with the, something like a student union app, potentially you could move the deadline um, because you know it's not that, it, it, it kind of moves, if it's, it's a year long project, whereas this is a week long event, you can't really move the event if you're absolutely. So there was a lot of pressure. Um, and this was a really interesting app for us because it looked at trying to change the way that user feedback, um, user feedback was sort of given and try to really test the way that we built, build for different users because I mean, these sorts of events have got a higher age of users than we're usually used to, for example, the student union app. Um, so, so basically how it works is um, you've got an event list, um, for example, reading, reading this passion is an event, you can add it to your schedule and before the event happens it will say to you, oh, how are you what are you expected from this event? And the user fills in the information and sends it to, sends it to the event organisers and then once they've been to the event, it will say, oh, you've been to the event, um, what, how are you feeling, how did you feel, how did you find it? So what it allows them to do is get live feedback, rather than waiting at the end of an event and say, here's two pages of, to fill in, um, how um, people have forgotten by that point what they've seen and how it works. It's actually, the fact you've got the mobile device with you allows them to actually get that live feedback. Um, and then we went a little bit creepier and asked people to submit their mood and then track their GPS so we could tell how people were feeling around the festival. Um, but for an event, it's quite cool, the fact you can see oh, loads of people are really sad over there, what can we do for a magician in there or something? They can actually live and travel the festival. I mean, it's probably a little bit on the creepy side, but it, the client wanted it, so that's fine. Um, and yeah, and set point in that down there. I couldn't think of anything clever to put there, so. Um, and one thing that's helped, so we've got our clients, so Pixilly and Becky worked on, worked work with our placement, we've been doing projects with them in the past two and a half years, they've kept us going. Um, IDAP, we're now on our third app build, I think, third or fourth platform working with them, and also got the UBSU project. Um, Silverstream TV, we've been working on projects with them for the past two years, so all those people that we knew beforehand have all been people that we've worked on projects we, we, well, we work, worked on projects with, and those previous connections have actually kept the business going because we're able to look after those relationships. But you, at some point, you've kind of got to widen the net, you've got to find more people to do business with. So, over the past 
two and a half years since we started, I've been trying to go to lots of different events to try and meet new people. I mean, I went to Silicon Beach in 2013 and managed to pull a project working with Channel 4, for example, um, which is really good. Uh, Pima Business Network is a local, net local networking group which we've managed to pull on work as well. So it's really kind of widening the people who know about your brand and know about your business, depending on what it is, um, and let them know that you're around and also try and pull work from it. And also things like, like Minds and Silicon Beach is trying to a lot of those events are about people trying to push new ideas of what's going to happen in the future and also helps you sort of come up with new ideas for your business and sort of see out of your, if you're in an office all the time it's difficult to kind of work out what's going to happen next. You kind of always got to be conscious of how the industry you're in is moving. Um, and here's an example, another example, so looking at collaboration and looking at working with other businesses. All these sites uh, have come as a result of other people bringing us in work. So all those sites had um, different desi well, had designers that all designed those sites, and they came to us and said, "Look, um, can you can you do the build for it?" And that's purely from work networking purposes. I've said to you, I've said to these guys, "Look, you guys are designers. Do you want to start designing websites? We can do the build for you." So they're going out, they're selling their service. We've added an extra bit onto their service and said, "Look, we can help you out. Just uh, we can do the build for you." And now they've come back and they brought us more work. So from doing that networking touching base of those new contacts, we've actually increased our net and now we're reaching more businesses because we've got people out there selling for us, which is quite nice. It saves me some work. Um, and more recently, this project came, they're an outset client. They recommended us, they probably not allowed to recommend us, and there's some sort of issues through that because both for their clients. Um, but they came to us and said, look, we've been to agencies in America, we've been to agencies in London, we've got this product idea, and no one wants to build it, no one thinks they can do it, or no one wants to build it. Um, and basically, it's, it's like a nice moon pig, but for wedding stationery. I don't know if that, that clears it up. So they run a, they run a bespoke um, a wedding stationery business where people contact them and say, look, I've got a wedding coming up, can you design me some, uh, uh, some invitations, for example. And they, then they do that, they do it by hand, and then they post them up. And they wanted to find a way of internationalizing it and actually get more customers. So we build them a system which allows them to upload their designs. Um, they can customise it, the clients can customise the text and either pay to get a PDF to print it off or pay to get it printed. And then this is accessible all over the world. Um, okay, it was probably a bit of a risk us taking it on. Bear in mind, we hadn't really done most technology before. Luckily enough, I built some, we built some prototypes and we had some of the technology already. Um, but again, it's about taking risks. You know, if you don't take the opportunity to try and do things, you're never going to grow as a business, you're never going to develop. Um, and they're actually, although we launched it in March, they've now been shortlisted for uh, best wedding stationery with um, some international uh, wedding magazines as well. So they're actually doing really well uh, based on some of the work that we've done for them. Um, and finding the right route to market. Um, yeah, so I've sort of talked about networking and I've talked about Hipparay, that business. So they do things like they do networking, they go to wedding fairs, they go to um, events and they um, they advertise in wedding magazines. It's not going to be the networking might not be right for the business that you want to go for. So it's finding what fits with your purpose and, and working out for yourselves. Um, I go to about eight networking events a month, and most of them start at seven o'clock in the morning. And I never, I'm not a morning person, and I don't want to be eating at seven o'clock in the morning because generally they're breakfast events. Um, but um, is that is that with a chamber? Uh, that's the uh, business network, but yeah, I also do yeah. chamber events as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, was, I was invited to those uh, last, last year, and yeah. like seven in the morning, and I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sometimes, yeah, but sometimes I mean, I'm, I said I'm not a morning person, it's, di it's, diff it's difficult, but yeah. I've just got to get up at uh, get up six in the end. I never get up at six. When I was at uni, I didn't get up at six. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just got to try and like, put that extra effort in and push yourself and push yourself to find what the right business is for you. I mean, I've been doing that networking for about two years. I'm still trying to work out if it's the right, if it's the right, if it's the right route to market. Like, time will tell. Definitely pulled in some work from doing it. Um, and I kind of wanted to um, push that with a point as well. So this is a, not a very pretty graph. I don't think you get pretty graphs though, do you? Well, maybe you do. I don't know. Um, so on the green, you've got ex-colleagues. And red, you've got friends, and, and purple, you've got networking. So this is our first year in business, um, based on how many projects we've got from different people. Um, and basically, all those, I'd argue, all those are kind of referral. So people who have told other people about us. So the 90, 80, 90 percent, let's say, is 
all, all done from our close networks of people we already know. In our second year, we managed to increase, increase it to a third of our business was coming from networking. And that's purely from actually getting out there and talking to people. And that's all business that we wouldn't have got before. Um, I think that's the point I'm trying to make is it's, it's trying new things and trying to get out there and talking to new people and finding new ways of getting work. Um, so yeah, for us that's quite a big deal. Maybe next year I'll pull up another graph and maybe it'll be half. I don't, I don't know, it might even say the same, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, so what's next? Um, trying to throw in some what we're up to the moment. This is the new SU app. I don't know if any of you downloaded it. It looks a lot nicer. Um, we actually planned this build a little bit better than the last one because the last one we had a lot less time. Um, so this recently we've launched, it's literally just got events in at the moment. Um, add it to your calendar, favourite them. Um, later this month, probably early next month, we'll be launching in with um, looking at deals. So all the gamification stuff was stripped out because Apple made the decision that they no longer want to allow people to reward for sharing. So that pretty much uh, killed off all our gamification stuff we've been building in the previous years. And, killed off, and if we had gone forward with the Super Union platform, it probably would have killed that off as well. Um, but yeah, so event stuff. Um, um, next, we're looking at deals will be coming out. So local deals from local venues. Um, and then after that, um, we're now actually integrating the Qualia system in with this. So we're kind of mixing our Plymouth projects together um, and creating, uh, looking at adding feedback in there. So that should be done by Christmas. So a really exciting project. So if you download the app, you'll be seeing more updates coming soon. And not just bug fixes, which is nice. Um, and this is sort of, this has not really been aired yet. This is, this is launching in January. Um, and this is working with the work we're doing with Plymouth City Council working with IDAC again. This is like Qualia 2.0, um, but it's actually local, so I don't have to drive to Cheltenham to talk to clients, so I can actually do it, do it from Plymouth. Um, and this is a basically like Qualia, but for a, lot, for a longer term base, and also we've got a reward scheme in there as well. Um, so you might go to, to Theatre Royals involved, Plymouth Arts Centre involved, quite a lot of the arts organisations. So you can go to Theatre Royal, for example, you can check in, but not share, but you check into the system so we know them there, because that's, that's yeah, clever ways around doing it. And also uh, offer feedback, um, and then you get points, um, and then if you want to go to the art centre and get a cup of coffee, if you've got enough points, you can get a free cup of coffee. Um, and what it allows to do, all the venues of Plymouth can actually get feedback um, from their clients. So yeah, another exciting project, and again, from working with IDAT, the fact we've looked, and, and looked after that relationship, we've built that relationship with them, it's allowed us to um, get more apps from them um, and actually build our client base as well. Um, I could have, how are we doing for time? Uh, okay for time, yeah. Yeah, fine. We've got a few slides left. Yeah, that's fine. So, some final pointers. Yeah. Everyone alright? For us, it's consistency is important. I think everyone who uses, ever into a business event, they also always talk about a bar, the barber shop analogy. The barber analogy. So, if you go, to a, you go to the same barber every day, or every day, God, but if your hair goes very fast. Um, every every few months, because you want to get the same haircut, because you want to have that same experience, you go in, and my barber he offers me a, a beer or a or a side, which is quite nice to relax. Um, and it's the same experience. The set the haircut's pretty much the same when I go in. The experience is pretty much the same. And I keep going back there because I like that experience and I expect that experience. So if working with your customers, you want to be keeping that recurring experience when you're when you go there. Keep that consistent because that's what they expect. Um, under promise and over deliver and managing expectations. Um, this is under promise over delivery is so overused and I keep hearing it all the time, but it's, it's always right. If you promise someone a Death Star, we always use Death Star analogy and give them, I think we said a lampshade, which is like a round, round thing, they're not going to be that happy. So make them realize, say you're going to deliver something in a couple of weeks um, and actually deliver it in a week, or whatever your business, how your business works, always make sure you give these to the one thing. And also, if you've got it in your, in your kit to deliver something better, give them the thing and then give them the extra bit better later on and make sure that they know what they're getting. Um, otherwise you're going to find yourself in this kind of scenario where you're kind of wanting, your client wants a cat, a tiger and, and you're offering a tiger and really just going to deliver that, which is upsetting. That's very angry. They're both quite angry though, really, so, yeah. Um, and also focus on your ethos. Um, I think another line to this was uh, don't get bullied. Um, we spend a lot of time, um, I've done a lot of mentoring programs um, with bigger businesses, so um, for example, an Atherton company in Bristol, um, the MD came around and sort of was doing a mentorship, mentoring us and how we should work, um, and was telling us how to do things, 
and we were saying, wait, and we were saying, wait a second, that's not how we want our company to go. That's not how we want to run. Um, and the, the risk is our ethos is what makes us uh, different than other businesses. If you let people stamp you down and let people sort of boss you around, then you potentially could lose that. So always stand by the decisions to stand by what you want to do as a company. And um, that's kind of me. Um, yeah, we don't know how. We can do Q and A now. Yeah, yeah. Don't know the time wise. I hope some of it was helpful. I don't know if anyone's got any questions at all. But that's my comp that's the Twitter uh, for the company. Are you obligated to like keep fixing bugs or like and what about like these updates? How does it work then? Um, so when we usually work with our clients, we have a um, uh, warranty agreement with our clients. So we will say we'll build it um, with a time scale, and if it, if they find any bugs in 30 days, we'll fix it. Um, if it's our fault, um, if it's something that comes up, so a new a new device comes out or, or something like that, that's usually on, usually cost on top. Yeah, but usually you. That's another thing I say is always make sure you're con you've got contracts in place to look after you. A lot of um, businesses fail and struggle because they haven't got the right con the right terms and conditions in place. Um, we got burnt a couple of months ago um, where we had a client who um, agreed to do some work. We agreed to do some work with, and we didn't have a termination agreement. Um, so we started the work for the first part of the project. Our developer went away for away for a week, came back, and we were like, okay, ready to continue the second half. And they said, oh, we've decided to rest it in house. So we booked in all that work. But there's nothing on our contract that said that we can get any sort of rebate from that or the rebate, the rebate from it. So we charged the work that we'd done and we kind of tailored, targeted the work in. Um, but yeah, make sure you've got the right terms and conditions. And it might take time to do that. Um, we're kind of still developing and growing our terms and conditions. But I think that's always as a new business is being careful with what you've got in those situations. Definitely. Do you have any advice for like uh, if you're trying to find co founders or um, people to work in your team? Who, what are the kind of people you're looking for? Um, that's a difficult question for us. I mean, I think our, our challenge has always been <coughs> we, I think outsourcing wise, it's always difficult for us to find other people that we can work with because we've worked with each other for four years. So yeah. you know, we've built that network and that trust. Um, and now one of our guys from uni has actually come back, come back um, over to Palmer from London and we're starting to work with him again now. So it's kind of, again, I think. Networking. Um, I think there's lots of crowdsourcing. There's lots of local sorts. There's lots of more local crowdsourcing websites. It's mainly our marketing budget. Um, I like to say we say it's going to cost. We're going to put this aside for the year. Realistically, we don't, and we probably should do. It's more a case of I try it out and see how it happens. Um, Becky's our sort of our iron lady in the office, who basically tells me off if I try and spend stuff. Um, so she pretty much manages most of that stuff. It's just a case of working out and seeing if it fits. I think. I mean, I would never have thought that going to, I mean, price-wise, we market ourselves probably the medium to larger businesses in the cost, so we didn't think going to something like a business network, which is a lot of smaller businesses would be worthwhile. Um, but from going to those events, I've met up with smaller businesses who also know bigger businesses and managed to put in quite a lot of work. So it's, I don't know if that answers your question. I've got a question. Okay, can I rephrase it? Yeah. How, how far are you prepared to travel for a network? Um, Bristol at the moment, Bristol and London. I think you've got to work. I think cost-wise, London's a good place to go because that's where the, there's a lot of money. There's also a lot of competition as well. Um, but the problem is we've got a lot of big businesses in Plymouth that will go to London for work, which I think is mental. When there's quite a lot of people in Plymouth who can do just as good a job. Um, so it really depends on what size projects you want to bring in, um, or what size work you want to bring in, and, it, and working at value in comparison to that. A trip to London is not, not expensive compared to what size projects you could be bringing in from the from travelling over that distance. Um, but most of it, again, is from the other side of it, it's consistency. So you want to keep going to those events and, and be a, a constant face at those events so people can actually get to know you. But it really depends on your business. Thank you. Oh, we've got another <laughs> Apart from returning customers, uh, how do you market your service? Do you, like, are you heavy on social media or anything like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, social media wise, so my role in the company is uh, business developer, account manager, uh, uh, so ma and marketing, as well as, I think I do other stuff as well. It doesn't seem like an awful lot when I just want to say it out loud. Um, so, yeah, social media is, is a big one. I, I have pulled in some inquiries from doing things like Twitter stuff, so people rep more like people recommending us via Twitter. Um, LinkedIn's really good, uh, professional profiles, really useful to have. Um, because people can then go on there and sort of see if you're real 
which is always always nice. Um, website web presence is really important. Um, I'd say it's really important for every business now. Um, it used to be at the time when a bit of a builder and plumber, you probably wouldn't want to have, necessarily have a web presence, and that's probably what I'd say. But now, actually, that's where people search. That's where all that's where people find all their business. So web presence is massively important. Um, we also do blogs. Not as frequently as we should do, um, which is really good. So, of course, you know, that's social media again, but driving that traffic back to the website. Um, networking, which is really important. Um, and also doing um, exhibitions as well, um, which has been really good. So, we do um, we have a business show, which is run by the Chamber. We did that last year, or this year, I think we met doing that. Um, and we'll be doing that next year as well. So, but again, it's finding, the right, finding those right networks and those right yeah. events to be going to, that's the right fit. And doing the right thing. It's different for every. It's different for every business. But yeah. social media is, is definitely the number one must do. Yeah. Yeah. How did you distribute your roles and responsibilities? Obviously, you started off in university, yeah. and when you sort of went right, this is live now. We're going for real. We're looking for real customers and to generate profit for the business. With you all being friends, you said like you're the managing director. Yeah. What, did you, how did you sort of distribute what each member was going to do, and was that easy? Uh, yeah, it kind of fit. Oh, he's laughing. Did it fit? It did fit. It's all in a Word document. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we have a. Is it a Word? It is a. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. We literally have a. It's like almost called like a flow chart uh, called our role assignment. And we've got literally every role in the company. So anything down from doing branding to writing copy for blogs. And it's all in this document. <coughs> it's a massive, weird flow chart. It's not a very efficient way of doing it, but it allows us to outline who <coughs> wants to do what. Yeah. Um, the challenge is then what jobs don't we want to do and what does everyone not want to do is how you dish those out which is the challenge. Um, in regards to my role, I kind of, we all kind of fit, we generally fit in into our roles quite nicely so I spent a lot of the time managing projects and coming up with ideas. Um, Christian and Becky were developed, pretty much developed all the, most of our projects we were working at uni and Paul was doing all the design work. So from that point of view it kind of, that fit. Um, but if you're running your own business, you want to be doing the stuff that you want to do. So I think that's the important stuff. But also, there's always jobs, like I said, that you don't want to do, and they're the ones that are going to be the challenge to dish out. Um, and if there's stuff you can outsource and you can afford to outsource it, then pay someone else, if, pay someone else to do it. Or at least have that as your business aim to outsource the work you don't like. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Any more questions? Awesome. On a note with outsourcing and outsourcing and finance, do you have an accountant? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an accountant. We do yeah. all our payroll in house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have an accountant, and they do a lot of our planning, yeah. um, tax planning and stuff, which is stuff we have. I don't have a clue about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Becky pretty much is our in house, um, like pay does all our pay way everything. Um, but yeah, it's useful to have that because yeah. a lot of people don't want to do it. Um, but also finding someone who you can trust and you know is going to look after you as well is really important. Um, but they, they're worth then they're worth their weight in gold because if it stops you from doing all the stressful accounting work then it's worth doing. Again, it's that outsourcing jobs that you don't like for most people. So as you are growing now and getting more and more customers, are you thinking of growing and getting more employees Um it's something it's something we've thought about. Um, I think it's again it's looking at the, we don't know. I think in our third year we said we'd take on a placement student, it's now our third year and now we're saying we'll probably do that our fourth year. Um, but in this year we've already taken on two work experience students for two weeks. So it kind of balances out on that side of things. Um, we originally started the company and three of us said we don't want to build a company, we want it to be four of us. We want it to be four of us because it's just easier, we can trust each other, we can work. After being in the company for two years, uh, the guys quickly realised they don't want to be developing until they're in their 40s. Um, so we're going to have to grow and develop a team underneath um, underneath that. And I think in my role as an as MD, the only way, there's no career progression for me, which is kind of scary. And the only way I'm going to get a better rep and, and grow my career is if we have more people in the business and the business gets bigger. So I kind of see, yes, I, I see we will take people on. I think it's a lot further down the line. And at the moment, we'll just work on that freelance, that freelance network and building up so we've got that constant work first and expanding and contracting as, as work comes in. But I think we will have to take on that. <coughs> I think we're a bit scared of the HR side of things and all the legal documents and all that stuff. And kind of taking on freelancers kind of avoids that. Um, another thing is, is generally freelancers, they'll work if they're sick. 
which is quite nice. Whereas if you obviously if you take an employee, you have to pay them when they're sick, um, and you should really let them go home as well. So you know, so there's, there's definitely pros and cons to different ways of working, but I think we will have. To. The, the long answer to the question, the short answer is yes, we will have to take one eventually. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, did you have to invest a lot of money um, personally when you started up, or was it through those business challenges and things like that? Uh, when we first started the company, we put in 20 quid each, and uh, we got pound shares. I think was it pound shares or penny shares? I think it was penny shares when we started the company because we're a limited company. So yeah, we didn't have a great deal to start off with, um, and obviously the fact that we only paid for two months' rent kind of helped that as well. Um, the, the, the funding and the loans helped. Um, especially for investing in equipment because we're all using our own machines and all using our own bits of equipment. I mean, the good thing about being the industry that we're in, you don't really need to, you don't need to buy stock. Um, you're literally just paying for yourselves and for the equipment that you're using, so the costs are quite low. Um, but I think most industries you'd have to invest a lot, get a lot more money invested or find people to invest in the idea. But it does help getting the loan. Um, but I'm not advocating it anyway. Any other questions? Okay, uh, awesome. Thank you so much for coming in, Gavin.